Now, a lot of technical guys like to trade patterns, and patterns are quite a nice way of knowing the area of where to place your stop loss. Technical traders look at charts and patterns that develop out of price action, and they would typically place a stop loss level that would either break or change the pattern. So without getting too technical, as this is an introduction, I just want to look at some basic patterns, and maybe you guys can look at your charts, see if you can identify any of them, and this will help you not only establish where to put a stop loss, but help you to, to formulate a complete trade. In other words, your entry, your exit, both take profit and stop loss. So let's look at some basic patterns. Okay, one of the most common ones is a symmetrical triangle. Um, very nice to trade and also very easy to play stop losses. So as you can see, the symmetry is formed by these two lines of support and resistance. Um, if you were trading a symmetrical triangle, generally this is quite a bullish continuation pattern. So traders would generally look to buy a break above or below this, this triangle. In this case, the price broke up above the triangle and traders would have generally gotten in after confirmation, which would have been probably this green candle over here. Now, once you've established your entry point and your take profit, how will you know when this changes? So what a technical trader trading this pattern would look for is that the price breaks back inside the triangle. Because once the price breaks back inside the triangle, chances are high probability that it would go and retest the bottom of this triangle, which would then trigger either a short trade when it breaks out of the triangle or a long trade if it bounces off this line. So if you traded this green candle on a break of the symmetrical triangle, quite easily you would place your stop loss somewhere in this region, which is nice and tight and it tells you exactly what is going to happen when you go wrong. So you would have typically bought this at say 1740. If it broke below this line, you would have taken it out near these or just underneath these lows at say 1675. You would have lost less than a buck and taken all the upside. Does that make sense? Yeah, we have a flat top triangle, pretty similar to the symmetrical triangle. Um, quite a lot of trades going, possible trades going on in here. Um, two examples I can give you just by looking at this chart. Well, first of all, here we have the flat top. There we have a break of the flat top. And here is a nice stop shown that if you bought the bottom in this congestion point, a bounce off the support line again as with the symmetrical triangle before, you'd be buying a bounce off this bottom, maybe taking profit here if you're a little bit conservative, but then break traders would typically buy the break out of this flat top triangle and then look for a lot more upside. For them it's quite easy because once they've traded the break, they would place their stop loss back inside the triangle as with the symmetrical triangle, but if you had gotten long, in this area of congestion at this flat top triangle, you would have placed your stop outside the triangle. So the minute it broke out and confirmed with maybe one more trading session below this, this uh, support line, you would have gotten out and saved yourself a lot of heartache. Here we have uh, what I like to call the megaphone pattern or a broadening formation. Now these can also go either way, but generally this is a bearish pattern. It signals that there's a big price move going to come to the downside. This is a bearish continuation pattern in general. So, very easy if you look at the other two triangles, this one faces the other way, and you would typically wait for a break of the support line. You would enter a short trade, obviously have your own target in mind, up to your risk tolerance, and as with the other two triangles that I've shown you, any break back into this rising um, megaphone or, or broadening formation would be your stop loss. So let's say we would have gone short at a break here, so let's call it about 43. We would have looked to go short and held that short into the money up until we comfortable with the profits that we were going to make, but any break back into this triangle would have left you massive upside to carry. Okay, now early traders as you can see here, would have gotten in at the top of this megaphone formation. So another trade, so there's two in one here that you can look at, because many trading opportunities in, in a broadening formation. 
Uh, you would get short at the top of the broadening formation, take profit around this level. If it breaks out, you could get short again. Quite, quite a nice pattern to trade. And the famous head and shoulders. Now, a lot of guys trade the head and shoulders completely the wrong way. What many guys don't realize and don't understand is that a head and shoulders, whether it's upright or inverted, upside down, always retest this neckline. So let's just go through the parts of a head and shoulders. You'll always have a left shoulder. You'll always have a higher peak, which forms the head. And you'll always have a right shoulder. The right shoulder, for a continuation bearish pattern, is generally weaker. In other words, you'll have far more red candles on the way down. Now when a head and shoulders pattern or the price breaks through the neckline, this is not your signal to short. Your signal to short would be this candlestick over here where it retests the neckline. Because a lot of times these patterns fail if the neckline isn't broken and retested. The neckline has to break or it has to be tested and fail. Once it breaks above the neckline, the pattern has failed. And this is what makes it nice for, for placing a stop loss. So once you've identified your head and shoulders pattern, you wouldn't be going short over here on the break, and you wouldn't be going short on the confirmation. You'd be waiting to go short on a test of the neckline and a failure. In other words, we'd be going short here at this black candle. You need to confirm. Then trading this pattern becomes very easy. Because the rules of a head and shoulder says that the distance between the head and the neckline should equal the target to the downside. So there's a lot of downside. Even though you've missed two or three candles on the break, you've still got a lot of downside to make profit. But let's say you've entered the trade now and you're not sure where to put your stop loss. Now remember, the head and shoulders always test the neckline. We could have seen an, a second test over here. So your stop loss should not be the neckline. It should be a break of the neckline. So typically a technical trader would have placed his stop loss probably a little bit to the top of the last candle that broke that. So you'd place it maybe a buck or two or three above that neckline. And a close above that neckline really confirms that the head and shoulder has failed and you should be out of the trade. So these patterns are very nice to trade. 